we had a scary experience. And we want to talk about that scary experience today because I hope that our conversation is going to help you guys to not live what we lived. And as you can see, Pat is here. As he was part Hi, of bud. the scary experience. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> a big part. <laughs> And uh, so how do you want to start this? Well, yeah. So it all started like end of December uh, with like uh, occasionally I would get like chest pain that I thought maybe were uh, heartburns or like a, a bunch of variable that was actually uh, when I was like, for example, laying down on one side, it was better than on the other side. Or when I was getting up, it was gay. It was getting better. But over the next couple of weeks, those incidents like those chest pains were getting more fre frequent and a little bit more intense. I don't know if you remember that you caught a cold. That was the... Yeah, I was a, yeah, I got a cold too. Yeah, I got COVID actually. So it was like even uh, even COVID, I think. Was it COVID or... Okay, I so I think it was it COVID. Was COVID. Okay. I, yeah, because that, well, that was the breaking point for, yeah. for when you started to have trouble like... Yeah, it became more obvious. Yeah. Like you thought you had bronchitis or something like this. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Yeah, even I did even like a, an appointment, uh, like a telemedicine appointment. Th that's I think that was like the the Thursday before I got in like in the hospital. So Friday I was able to go to work, and funny enough, like those those chest pain events like uh, happened in the morning and at night. So in in the morning it was waking me up, and in the evening like around eleven. Does but that it was, sound familiar? The was, COVID thing that would hit in the morning. Yeah. And it, that, so so, so we was, really thought that was just yeah, still COVID. It it was re never during the day like it was happening or like I went to work was fine. I don't have a family doctor so trying to get to see a doctor where we live in Montreal it's like not a fun and easy thing let's just put it that way so that's why I was able to to see a doctor over like a teleconference and but like he cannot really examine you and the idea was just to get like okay where should I go next so that Saturday uh, you had a party with like uh, one of our niece so I was like oh let, let, go ahead I'm gonna rest and that that night like where you when you were gone i had like another episode usually like it happens and take the last like five six minutes and i'm good after this one was a little bit like tougher than the other one so it happens like three times over a period of 45 minutes and after the last one my heart my heart beat my heart rate was not like slowing down it was still like i was resting i was trying to calm down and it was still like 100 110 uh, bpm so that's why i think i called you and you were on your way already so i would i went took a shower made my bag and I say like babe we're going to the hospital can I ask, how did you know your heart rate was what it was? Like, oh, was I have my your, my your my trusty uh, my Sa trusty Samsung, Samsung watch? watch. Yeah, okay. I'm, and I was even doing uh, I can do like EKGs with that that watch. Like, and it was like showing signs of like irregularities, like in the in the thing. So I was like, then okay, like this is not like uh, lungs. This is not like a cold. This is not like uh, a heartburns. Like, let's go to the, and in Montreal, we have a, a heart institute, the Montreal Heart Institute. So we left, I think around one, one thirty, and we got there at two. And like, I saw the first doctor at four, it was like four thirty, I think. And the first thing that, that she said was like, oh, we see a bunch of um, uh, uh, COVID. I don't know. I don't remember how she called it, but like it was like an inflammation of uh, the envelope of the heart, like caused by COVID. I was like, oh, OK, cool. Like she's going to give me a few uh, a few antibiotics, maybe some uh, anti-inflammatory and I'll be fine. <laughs> so <laughs> but like she told me like, OK, we're going to keep you and tomorrow you're going to see the cardiologist and we'll know we'll know better. So during that that few hours after, like between four thirty and, and nine, basically they they did blood tests, they did the electro uh, some other EKGs, and they were monitoring me. And the first cardiologist, like uh, that came to see me in the morning, was like, oh, like I'm looking at your EKGs, like I feel like this is a sign of a blocked artery. So I was like, oh, okay, that's, this is the bad news. Then did I wait too long? Did my heart, like, uh, uh, did I suffer a heart attack, basically? And I didn't, like, I didn't know. He was kind of reassuring, telling me, no, no, I think it's like an artery. And, like, over the next few days, we'll know better. Like, he explained to me, like, the, the procedure the, the procedure for that is, like, really simple. Like, we they basically do an angioplasty. So they enter through your uh, your wrist and just, like, go check with the camera and they, they can see see where like there's a blockage i feel like the part where he says over the next few days we're gonna know better is the part that i 
makes me pause because it's yeah. basically saying you're not leaving for a few days yeah. and if it's such a simple thing to check why would we not check it right away so there's elements of causing people to stress and be in a situation longer than you need to be for such a simple procedure that did not take long to actually do problems like the problem that i learned after with the nurses is that the, the hospitals the hospitals right now are overcrowded like there's their lack personnel the the hospital are overcrowded uh, and i actually lived it like it's not it's not like the, the the topic of this video but it was incredible like so basically the cardiologist like like the i saw the first cardiologist like the sunday he told me like oh we're pretty booked today we're weekend we're gonna put on uh, we're gonna put you on medication to like to thin your blood to slow your heart rate to lower your blood pressure and then like monday we're gonna do the procedure you'll be f like and we're gonna go check monday come the nurse like arrives in my room say oh like we don't have space today unfortunately it's gonna have to wait tuesday then tuesday was like same same story they didn't have room finally i got my first my first diagnosis uh, thursday and it was um uh, 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 the ultrasound of the heart so it, you know, they didn't even go check the artery they wanted to to see if the heart was good like first so basically did the ultrasound and uh, the result came in and it was like good so did i didn't suffer like a heart attack um so basically like we went to the hospital at the, <laughs> the right time i guess Mm. And so after we went back to my room, uh, I was supposed to, this was the morning. So after lunch, I was supposed to go in for like, they were, they were keeping me fasted because they were pretty confident that after lunch, like, uh, I would go for the, the procedure. Like, and that's uh, and, where the wait began. Yeah. And then it was long, but I was hooked up to that pole with the two medication that, that, that were like IV that I couldn't like move really. So that was, I think Thursday. And I think it was one or, or two more days that I had to wait. And then like they, it was finally my, my turn. It was a week basically. Yeah, like Cause we went for, in on Saturday night yeah. and you came out Friday. Like a week for uh, an ultrasound that took maybe like half an hour. Yeah. And after that, you're not under, uh, they don't like the only thing that they, um, they numb is your wrist because they actually cut a little bit like of skin to get to your, I'm, I'm going to spare you the details, but in 45 minutes, they did find one artery that was like, uh, like very blocked. Like it was 98, 98% blocked, but there was some situation where like blood could flow. They don't know why, like so specific in time, like I was having symptoms. So 45 minutes after, like I, I had like a, what they call a stent though. They, they, they put a little metal spring into your artery to keep it. Like they, they do remove like what caused the blockage. They, they inflate like a little balloon with the, the spring. And this is, this keeps your artery. How like, do they remove uh, it? Eh? How do they remove it? They don't remove it. Oh, I thought you said they do remove it. Okay, no, no, sorry. they don't remove, they don't, they don't remove, remove it. Okay. Unfortunately, they don't remove it. Okay. So basically they're just opening the artery properly so with, just the, with the little spring. Yeah. Yeah, and, yeah. yeah, so I feel like the the interesting thing there is like the first thing took half an hour, the second thing took forty five <laughs> minutes, minutes, but you waited in the hospital for Probably. over like uh, um, almost a week. Well, but five days, six days before the procedure was done, yeah. and then you were in there for uh, another twenty four hours before yeah. they let you leave. Yeah, and I feel like the part that's really frustrating is recognizing that the system seems to be set up in a way where people wait. And it's not logical that people no, should be yeah. waiting as long as they're waiting. <laughs> the, the, the thing is, like, I think I was not like a, a, an, an urgent enough case. The thing is, like, like during the day, during the night, people are getting like in the hospital by ambulance, having heart attack, having a infarctus and, and stuff like that. So so I think there was always a, a more urgent case than me. And at some point, like some, somebody said, okay, like he's, wa he's waited enough, like he, it's his turn. I, I definitely get that they're, they're the urgency of cases, but I also feel like the way that the system is set up is to keep the hospital full because you theoretically could have a surgeon who just comes in in the day and does the non-urgent cases and just gets people out of the hospital who don't need to be there that are just waiting for procedures. Yeah. And like, why is that not how this is handled, right? Like, I think from from what I understood that they're also short on surgeons. Like, like honestly, here, like 
people like it's they're short on everything they're short on nurses they're short on doctors they're short on surgeons i really don't know if we want to touch that because the reason (laughs) that we're short (laughs) is because we don't treat our doctors and nurses properly the same way that we don't treat the clients properly so i don't know if we want to touch that but my point is if they had a better system i don't think people with scenarios like yours which in honesty that week stay a whole week that could have been accomplished in 24 hours i was supposed to to go on with the everything monday and be out tuesday but like it didn't happen unfortunately okay. but like yeah that would like that was the plan like really so, i think they want they wanted me out of there by uh, by tuesday morning so there's the they yeah. the nurses that were talking to you probably right. you wanted you out by oh, yeah. that but then there's the they the system that's like no 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 yeah. we wouldn't get enough money <laughs> if you left tomorrow yeah right because they're pumping you full of medication that hmm. okay they're then and they're making you wait yeah so the reason we're we're making this video because like you know we're a keto channel and a good health channel was the ridiculousness of how they feed you in hospital especially um like the heart institute and and how i would say maybe outdated are their information on on good health you can't imagine a breakfast that they were serving you uh there like was one or two bread slices plus oatmeal plus jam to put on your toast, plus an orange juice. When I saw that, I was like, wow, what? <laughs> is, is that like for real? Like they're definitely like they're, I don't, I don't even know another word than carb load. They're carb loading you like crazy. And actually, I, remember, I don't hear yeah. any protein in that, what you just said. Did I you say to, eggs? I had to ask. So, so. Okay, after, you, but you didn't say egg just now. I no, didn't no, no, no. Okay. There was no, no. The first, the first, the first breakfast I returned them. Like I was like, no. The the thing is like, yeah. To, to be on the, that topic, I think it it took two days for um, it, not a nutritionist. I think it was a nurse in charge of the the kitchen to come and ask me like if my my meals were like suited to to my lifestyle, and I was like, I'm so glad to see you because like that same day, the lunch was a spaghetti plate. Spaghetti. I was like, okay, nah, yeah, that's not working. After that, I did ask for no carbs and twice proteins, and they they did it. So they 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 oh, as much as they were they're pushing carbs, like they didn't say anything when I asked for basically more fatty and more protein than than carbs. But I remember I was like from my my room where I was like when you came to visit me. I was seeing a poster from outside on the wall and I said, oh, go take a picture of that poster. Oh, okay, you have it. So yeah, so so whole grain, then after fruit, vegetable, uh, legumes, like, uh, and then after that, lean dairies, obviously, like, yeah, you you can't like lean eat fat. Lean dairy? Lean dairies, okay. yeah. So and skim even, milk and that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. even at the top of the pyramid, Oh, the, 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 no, not the top of the pyramid, like the, just the layer before uh, the top of the pyramid. You have eggs, uh, red meat, lean, and uh, poultry, and fish. And on the top top, what am I seeing it? Yeah, the top top, only a few times monthly, like you have the sweets, like the desserts and stuff like that. So, yeah, so when I saw that pyramid, like uh, uh, I was like, yeah, this should be like completely upside down. Basically, like it should be the top of the pyramid should be the bottom and, and going and making your way well, up. Well, maybe not completely that because that very top of like so once oh, in a well, while yeah, sweet yeah, course, should like, not even should not be, be on the food yeah. pyramid. So uh, one thing I'm going to say about that, what that shows you is that we don't even have a, is this the government? No, it's, a, it's a, it, but it's, it's an institute. We don't even have an institute that has the courage to say sweets should not be on here. We, like you're in the hospital at this point in time by the time you're seeing this on their wall and they don't have the courage to say sweets like off to the side with a big x through it saying stop eating that and to me i think in that place that's where you should see it you know what wellness warrior when you go to rehab they don't have off in the corner the whatever was making you in rehab but just once in a while no they're saying stop it stop it right now this is why you're here and the heart institute should have the courage montreal heart institute i'm gonna say the whole thing should have the courage to say 
you're in here, dude. Stop it right now. They should have a sign that says stop smoking right now. They should have a sign that says stop drinking right now. They should be hardcore in your face. Do you see where you are? Stop it right now. That pissed me off. The fact that he got in there and he's telling me the next day what they gave him for breakfast. I was so angry. It's ridiculous. So that was like frustration number one. So when I saw that, I was like, okay, I'm gonna expect, like I have to expect a fight with my doctor because I have a doctor now that, that I have like an appointment coming up that needs to be planned, but like a follow-up appointment. Frustration number two, or medication. Because of course, like if you put your, your, your foot in the Montreal or the Heart Institute, they want to they want to put you on a ton of medication including some statins to lower your, your cholesterol because obviously like the the source of your problem with your blocked artery is cholesterol i was like okay so on my on the day i got out there was one that i was like not questioning it was like the blood thinner because you you want like the stent in your artery to heal not too fast to to create another blockage so you have to be on blood thinner so it's this is for one year so i was like okay fine I had some high blood pressure medication, but like all their data are, is collected when you're there. So of course I always had high blood pressure, but at the hospital, it was much higher. So <clears throat> that's what I, I told the pharmacist, like, like usually I was already taking my, my blood pressure, like these are my numbers. So he gave me like a, a dosage that, that w I think was a bit too high, but like manageable. Like he was giving me that in the hospital and I was feeling fine. So I was like, okay, I, I'm giving myself like six months to a year to get off that, that blood pressure medication by switching over to a, a, a carnivore lifestyle. And then like he, he gave well, mommy your cholesterol, you need to take that statin. I was saying, no, no, I'm not taking that. Like I, I, we, we know better, like we, but not we know better, but we know that um, like, like, that statins are, are, are a racket and pushed by pharmaceuticals. So like, I was like, I think I, we know I, better. I, yeah, I think we know better. So <laughs> anyway, so I was like, <laughs> the pharmacist was like, what? It's your choice, but like, oh, okay. But the doctor was like, oh, then we're, I'm gonna see you again with another blockage in uh, in three weeks. I'm like, okay, doc, like my blockage didn't, didn't build itself over a period of three weeks or so not even three months, not even three years. It's probably like 30 years of eating crap before that 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 didn't help plus the the high blood pressure that didn't help it i did respect the fact that they they like they tell you what to do and finally you can do whatever you want with all the the medication uh, I, like i had a good chat with the pharmacist that was with the doctor it was a little bit like tougher but with the pharmacist you, we had a good like half hour exchange on the medication and i was like okay like let's adjust it like that and good news like i've been out uh, like it's my all oh, close to two months now we're mm -hmm. in april and like already like I'm, I, I, I check my blood pressure. I'm going to the pharmacist, like my my local pharmacy, and like, okay, look at my number. Like, I want this do dosage lowered by X percent, and she agrees. Like, she so so far, I have two two blood pressure medication that like are down twenty five percent in the dosage. So pretty good on my goal to get off that like in uh, in uh, the shortest <laughs> freaking amount of time. That's the scary part, right? is that once you start taking medication you're 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 locked in right they have you because you can't just stop taking it and if you don't have a pharmacist or a doctor who's willing to work with you towards your goal of being off the medication like we don't know the the, the appropriate amount that we can decrease this over time like we don't know right so we need the doctor to work with us or the or the pharmacist to work with us to help us to to do what's best and i'm so happy that your pharmacist is working with that and that and that you're you're keeping up with it because you have you're the, like we have to advocate for ourselves if we say oh i'm comfortable here with the medication the pharmacist will let you stay on that even though it's not necessary in the long run all right in the short run yeah there might be reasons to be on it again medication is helpful when you need it what's the scenario where you ever need a statin it's still to be shown is yeah it's not been shown where taking a statin is ever a scenario that you need it but yeah blood thinners of course blood pressure medication of course like that makes sense but the, the, even the of course like i didn't fight it too much because it, 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 like 
we like the the literature says oh your ideal blood blood pressure should be no higher than 100 over 80 but like we've we've seen how many videos that are challenging that like to me i was always like more or lately like before getting into the hospital i was more like 140 over 93 and 94 like average of course i had my peaks like if i was like stressed or something like, like it, it could get higher than that but I never had the headache caused by that. I never was like non-functional, like all the symptoms that they tell you, like, oh, careful, if you have a blood pressure that high, it could be. But I think still that I was like, I was aware that, that they, there might be some internal damage or maybe that's what caused my, my blockage because it could be a source of, uh, uh, of those artery blockage. High blood pressure rips like, uh, part, like the inside of your artery, artery and your, your, your body tries to yield it and finally there's uh, like too, too much like um, blood clot there and like you end up with the, and if it was already blocked, let's say, Maybe, maybe for a, a, a 50 years old dude is like maybe with our lifestyle it's like because I my two others artery my two other arteries are blocked like 40 what, what did I tell you 45 or like something like that so but they didn't do anything about them like it's fine like it, it's like considered normal for a standard American diet uh, lifestyle lifestyler who will say like would say will say it like that and so, I think that's one of those situations again where it's the idea of You'll come back. Yeah, we'll do the other procedure. <laughs> so. Don't worry about we 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 can, we depend on you to keep eating the wrong way, and that's another hospital stay, and that's another seven days, and that's an right, and so like there's 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 no, luckily for us, there's no benefit to them to do the two that are not ready yet yet, so you have the opportunity to go and heal yourself with food, but can you imagine if they were trying to be efficient? <laughs> So like just telling the, the cardiologist that I would go on a, on a carnivore lifestyle, <laughs> that's, he kind of freak out a little bit, but my, 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 about, about me eating just meat. No, but in and, what way? How do you uh, freak out? Like telling me that I would see him again in two months oh, okay. with another blockage and another like. Uh, oh, that's what that was about. I thought yeah, it was yeah. about not taking the statins. No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah. Like he was, but but of course, like he was, uh, he, he was advocating ta taking the statins. But like, uh, it was more like the fact that I don't want to take your statins and I'm gonna go like carnivore. And then he was like, oh, I'm gonna see you. Like then I'm gonna see you in two weeks with another blockage. I told him, uh, we'll see, like, uh, we have actually the, the benefit here to have like insurance, like, uh, and, and so, yeah, so, so like, yeah, we'll see. But, but again, we know better with all the doctors telling us how many people like healed themselves with a the carnivore diet. So I have just like, uh, speaking of that, a little exercise, like for you after that, I went, <laughs> yeah, yeah <laughs> surprise. <laughs> I went online to be honest, at some point I was questioning this am i doing the right thing going against what the cardiologist the pharmacist and the system told me so i went online and 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 google like what's the best diet for after what what to eat after an angioplasty like the the the, mm -hmm. the, the procedure so ready to comment on what we should eat after angioplasty sure, sure okay <laughs> it's not it's it's also very very funny the other thing about like the doctor and and just the hospital set up and and to begin with how many days before you even got a room which is another frustrating thing is that you get to the hospital you're not feeling good and you couldn't even rest every time i saw you you look so exhausted you're in a hallway and people walking by constantly constantly it's like how do you rest in that kind of situation when we know rest is so important for a body to heal and they and we have people in hallways and and not even like Anyways, but hospitals like here, like they, 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 they did, I think, build two in the last uh, 10 years. But the one I was like, uh, the, the Art Institute is like uh, relatively like a, oh, my goodness. a, a old hospital. Can I yeah. point something out to you? you just, mm -hmm. Thank you for saying that. You just reminded me of something. We had the money to build a bunch of new hospitals, but we don't have the money to pay our nurses and doctors properly so that they will stay in Montreal. So we build new buildings and we have the other buildings sitting there still belong to the government that you know, like they have to pay tax or, or do whatever, whatever the buildings are sitting there. But yet we can't have the money to pay the people who study here enough to stay here. Thank you for reminding me about that, because honestly, the whole thing to me, it just feels like a scam.
Okay, so first thing you need to eat okay. or you that, that's best to eat. Like, oh my uh, God, post, you're going to say uh, grains. Post angioplasty. No, the first one is fruit and vegetables. Oh my God. <laughs> so why not fruits? <laughs> why not well, fruits? First of all, sweet. Second of all, fructose. So I'm trying to save my heart, but who cares about my liver? Right? I'm just let's just put a bunch of fructose in my liver. So fruits is the is the number. <laughs> and then vegetables, you know what? If you pick the right vegetables, maybe. But do we ever pick the right vegetables? We want the potatoes and the carrots and I'm sure that they're not saying which vegetables you should be focusing on. Now, the other problem that I have since I, if you guys haven't watched my my video where I interviewed Sally Norton, you should check it out because the new other problem that I have with fruits and vegetables is all the oxalates and other things that are in these some of these foods, some of them, not all of them have as much, but you could just be trading adding, not trading, adding to your problem because you're allowing things like spinach and like I'm trying to think what other high potatoes in your diet that's going to give you your your body a, a struggle when your body is fragile when your body is fragile fruits and vegetables should not be the thing that you're focusing on should i say the answer or you want to save the answer for later what you should be focusing on oh no 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 yeah we, we'll save the answer, answer later. Okay. of course of course yeah yeah yeah. wellness warrior i'm frustrated okay. but okay number two <laughs> okay the one you thought was number one, whole grains. <laughs> so <laughs> why this one is bad? Okay, whole grains again. We have gluten. Pe people have so many problems with gluten, mm. but you're going to put that in front of people. Then you still have the oxalate problem for some of those. Um, I mean, they're they're just sugar. It's the, the, like, the, it's just sugar. No matter what it is, fruits, yeah. vegetables, grains, it's just sugar. The, the protein in these things is not bioavailable enough. Mm -hmm. It's like um, Dr. Lehman said it's coming in at like 40 to 50% bioavailable. When the true answer comes in at like 90%, <laughs> like why would you bother yourself with these things? The thing they're not realizing is that most of our health problems are caused by insulin resistance. And this category is what Spy, oh, maybe except for the sweets and dessert and, and raw sugar, like the the um, that whole grain category is what spikes the most your your insulin. So it's kind of like and I fruit. Was, and, oh, yeah, and the fruit too, yeah. But like, uh, yeah. But it's, it's, it's crazy how they they relied that much on that category. So of, can we pause there for a second and talk a bit more about the insulin resistance? Because people might not understand how insulin resistance plays a role in heart problems. Because it's not obvious. When we think about insulin resistance, we think about weight gain. But like the truth of the matter is, when you have insulin resistance, most of your hormones, first of all, are out of kilter with each other. But second of all, your body is in a state where it's like the sugar that's coming in is getting oxidized. So oxidative stress is happening. When you have oxidative stress, there's other hormones that need to be deployed and other processes in your body that need to happen to try to solve all of that. So your body is constantly working to get you out of the insulin resistant state you're in. And then the next morning you get up and have oatmeal with some strawberries and some honey on it and a glass and, of orange juice and a glass of orange juice <laughs> right like that's what they fed him yeah. it's like oh no there was no honey but uh, that's what they're feeding you there was a jam instead like it's a recipe for my body to still be in the position where it's struggling and i get it it takes years like you were saying pat like mm -hmm. we i know that since I was six months old and the first bits of food were put to towards me, my body was being pushed towards insulin resistance because that's the foods that parents are told, baby cereal, baby fruit. Those are the first things. And if your doctor pushes meat, you're lucky. Hmm. So we have been in this story our entire lives. So yes, you're right. Yeah. Your, your heart problems didn't start three weeks ago, like you said. Mm -hmm. It's, we need to understand that insulin resistance 
causes problems all throughout our body. Dr. Lustig talks about insulin resistance at different levels causing different problems. Insulin resistance at the ovaries causing PCOS, he said. Insulin resistance in the blood causing diabetes. Insulin resistance in the brain causing Alzheimer's and all kinds of... And insulin resistance throughout the body causing placking in different places is part of what... well. Did he say that one? I'm saying that one. I think it's contributing. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if he said that one, but I'm saying that one. That some of this placking that we're having, I believe is happening because of all the processes. So maybe it's not insulin resistance, but the processes that come about because of our insulin resistance. Mm. Frustrating. <laughs> Number three, finally, but, but partially finally, poultry and fish. It's specific poultry and fish so okay you don't see you see that we don't see any red meat there <laughs> because so here, red meat is the devil people and here's the problem that i have with poultry and fish not that i have a problem with poultry and fish so i eat poultry and i eat fish but again when you're talking about someone who's metabolically struggling who just came out from the angioplasty poultry and fish, typically, they're not saying wild-caught fish, first of all. Mm -hmm. They're not saying farmed poultry. So, unfortunately, the way that the North Americans <laughs> breed and, and, and get their meats to us and our, their fish to us, a lot of the time, those animals and fish are so full of antibiotics and eating the wrong foods that they can't properly um, process in their body means that the poorly processed food that they've eaten is in their fat and then we end up eating the poorly hmm. created animal that's not in the healthiest state is how I'm trying to say this yeah. so basically you know do you remember years and years and years and years ago when that mad cow blah 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 happened and they were like oh my gosh we can't eat this because if we eat it that was going to get into us it's the same kind of story that happens here wellness warrior there's the animal is experiencing poor processing creating problems in it and then we eat it and we get those problems and then you add to it the antibiotics and all the things that they feed the animal so that it doesn't pass before they can get it on our plate yeah. lots of reasons to be worried that they're focusing us on on fish and chickens or sorry poultry because those are the animals that don't have multiple stomachs to be able to process things the way that we would want it to be processed out so that we'd have that healthy meat yeah and they're eating the same crap grain based diet yeah. blah, blah. Um, because chickens and fish are not supposed to mm -hmm. eat grains mm -hmm. can you imagine that they're throwing grains mm -hmm. in the water so that the fish that are kept in captivity are so starving that they will eat something that's yeah. not food to them mm -hmm. like, like the torture yeah, so that that is for the first of all for the fish and the chickens yeah but but the reason they they don't want us to eat red meat mm -hmm. is because of the eye content in saturated fat is there something you can tell us about saturated like is what what did your research tell you about the healthiest eating? thing that we could ever eat is saturated, saturated fat. fat so there's research that shows that people that so if you're eating a balanced diet then people that eat saturated fat do better mm -hmm. there's also research that shows that if you try to limit cholesterol in older people, they don't do as well as the people that don't have that limit on them. So the interesting thing is the, the way that we do research, we have a tendency to, first of all, we don't do randomized control trials. Usually when it comes to food research, we want to give people surveys and we don't acknowledge the fact that if I'm, let's say I'm overweight and I'm eating my typical way, and you give me a survey and ask me, Violet, you know, like, did you eat fruit this month or this year? Because sometimes it's a whole year they're asking you about. Five times a week, once a week, once a month, people answer based on what looks good more so than what's true a lot of the time. Part of, and part, part of it because I don't remember, but part of it because I don't want to look like I'm not trying so I feel like a, one of the hard things is that we want to take people's word for it about what they're eating, not recognizing that the best chance, if you want to take my word for it, is have me fill in the, re the, the thing every day, right? Have, have me take pictures of my meals. Like, make me show you what I'm doing. And even at that, 
you're still going to have people that are going to say they ate the apple even though they didn't eat the apple mm. right but flip side of the coin <laughs> we're going to have people that are saying i'm not eating red meat because they know it's bad when they are and so there's so much confounding first of all when it comes to research but the second problem is that if i'm eating a bunch of high carb fruit a bunch of high carb grains a bunch of high carb everything and i've even put the smallest amount of meat on my plate that has fat on it now i'm doing high fat high carb mm -hmm. and i'm and, in the standard american yeah. diet that's getting me in trouble mm -hmm. and if i'm eating pizza and if i'm eating burgers i'm high fat high carb and we will call that burger with a bun red meat mm -hmm. even though no it's a bunch of carbohydrates with a little mm -hmm. bit of meat but we call that red meat there's so many problems with the research <laughs> especially uh a mcdonald's size patty <laughs> but that's another story okay number 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 four uh, after our meat so so basically uh we definitely add like uh more meat categories than just poultry and fish and i think like the fish i think is good but poultry isn't it the the weakest um nutrient like giving meat like if you have a, a chicken breast for example i think you get way more nutrients in uh, in beef and lamb and uh, so nutrient wise like you're talking about if you're talking about amino acids mm -hmm. no like it's okay. it, it's the, it's there the problem with poultry well first of all from what i understood from dr chaffee is that it can't filter out the, the problems. But the second problem with poultry, if you're doing chicken breast, you're not getting enough fat. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you'd have to add fat. And then, well, what kind of fats do people tend to add? They're adding olive oil. They're adding, like, they're, they're adding Don't oils that are not necessarily <laughs> yeah. going to give you the best you're, you're benefit. You're ahead of me. Stop. Okay. <laughs> number five. Uh, I'm going to go, well, I, uh, since you're, you, you, you tackle, like, the oil at number five, uh, we have the heart healthy oils. But what do we have? Heart healthy oils? Of course. Like, we... Um, oh my oh, god if you say no, okay well, let me read it because it's it's very uh, okay. uh interesting how it's like it's it's phrased so not not all fats are bad for your heart vegetable based oils including canola olive peanuts sesame, sesame uh, uh are are all heart like healthy fats so they start they second. start with vegetable and then they say canola oh, and then you olive, can olive and, and then peanut says me yeah so peanut oil we know goes rancid so fast again all of these oils if you can't cold press an oil it's not healthy yeah. first of all but second of all the problem that i hear in this one is that they're they're they don't know what oil is healthy mm. or or the companies that make oil are paying them to say that these oils are healthy mm. it's the only two possibilities yeah. because we know for a fact it's not even a question mark our body is made mostly with saturated fat oils so like you're talking like the the, the animal fat are the ones that can incorporate it into us mm -hmm. easiest because they are the ones that are the same not even similar the same and surprise now, there's, there's a small amount of like the oils that come from uh, like things like uh, olive and even avocado that yes can incorporate into us but the majority of the other oils that we get from plants they don't are, incorporate the same way yeah, they create are, they create damage in our um in our cells and they're yeah. highly inflammatory that's the thing I was surprised to see canola first because it's the I think the worst oil you can yeah. probably like add to your diet is uh, is canola oil. Not to so. mention that it it causes insulin resistance. Like yeah. we know that seed oils cause insulin. Not just that they you know they're not good. They actively harm your body. Doctor Barry told us you can give the poor quality food away. He said throw away the seed oils. That would be poisoning people yeah. so that to me is a clear do not eat if we go like that was number five if we like uh, quickly tackle number four which is uh, which are legumes why, where why those are a bad idea <laughs> okay so those are like seeds and nuts and that kind the, of stuff that's too? a different category actually oh okay so legumes like would legumes, be tell me which like ones beans, are like beans black beans uh, uh, I'm, I'm, my first beans, thing i want to like say is very likely they're high in in like other things so eat first of all they're they're carby so yeah. like usually they're carby they're but carby. i feel like they also have um 
lectins is the one that's coming to me right now. But I'm even wondering about oxalates or how, how much oxalate are in them. I would double check that if I was going to eat a legume, um, which is not going to happen anytime soon. Um, even just a carb count would stop me from eating that. But well, it's always like low fat. The, the, all the article is like low fat, low fat, low, low fat. fat like, low fat, okay. yeah, really, like it's so, so it's, it's really basically uh, suited for a high carb diet. Basically what's happening is that you just had a heart attack because of all the sugar in your diet, very likely. And they're mm. pointing you back towards more sugar. Mm -hmm. And why would they do that? Because then you block the rest of your arteries and yeah. we can have another procedure. <laughs> yeah. And nuts, like the like lastly, uh, the sixth, uh, the sixth uh, food recommended food would be nuts. So nuts and seeds are mm. the, the parts of the plant that's the reproductive part of the plant. The thing to keep in mind, um, unless you're a very specific animal, <laughs> You, that's going to kind of pass that through without harming it. Plants don't want us to eat their, their, their children, mm. right? Like that, like that just doesn't make any sense that the nuts and seeds are the things that we eat. And I think it was because we don't stop and think about it. The whole peanut allergy thing, mm. which I love when we call things an allergy, because what's happening is a huge amount of our population is reacting to peanuts. And rather than saying, oh, geez, peanuts are poisonous we say it's an allergy right let's just wait till the rest of the world mm. is no we don't need to 100 percent be reacting to realize that if some of us are reacting quickly it probably means that the rest of us are reacting slowly i'm gonna be like the the, the other side of devil's the devil, advocate the, devil, the devil's advocate from some someone that end up at uh, an, any arts in art institute with like uh, a typical standard american diet that like that person has been eating for the last 35 years are those cha those changes good or or like would be welcome to go for uh, from a high fat high carb mcdonald fast food pizza diet to a whole grain pa like or even whole grain pasta more vegetable more salad they, they still promote whole foods definitions yeah <laughs> so in my mind if you have pasta on that list that's not a whole food hmm. so True. right away there i'm saying hmm, the if you have canola oil on that list that's not a whole food so some of the things that you you listed to me no i wouldn't yeah. call those whole now so if if you were to say to me someone's going to put down all of the junk food and they're going to do fruits vegetables meat i would want them to stop there but if yeah. they're going to do grains they're going to do those those ancient grains mm -hmm. let's say do i think that they're doing better than the standard american diet absolutely yeah. absolutely do i think they're doing enough no here's why you were in the Heart Institute because your body stopped managing. That means, as your doctor pointed out, mm. the other arteries are already in trouble. Yeah. You don't have time to fool around with slowly, slowly. Please, Wellness Warrior, understand, mm. you don't have time to fool around with slowly, slowly. We're going to no. know this is tear as much down as you can and rebuild as fast as you mm. can and to do that you need to be on meat mm -hmm. and you need to be on fish you need and to be eggs. on poultry and eggs and eggs and a little bit of cheese maybe maybe, <laughs> maybe. if you can tolerate it yeah but you see again i'm saying the word if you can tolerate it mm -hmm. and how will you know see so i feel like even the cheese until i was feeling really good right. i probably would lay off the cheese yeah I would focus on the meat. You know why I would love the cheese? Let me back up and just say that because I feel like it's not always obvious to people when I say why I wouldn't do something, why that's the truth. Dairy is being made from milk of an animal. The milk of that animal is to make the whatever. So breast milk is to make a little person grow fast. Cow's milk is to make a cow grow fast. Goat's milk is to make a goat grow, right? The stuff in milk of a mother is giving you um, anti, like uh, to, to immunity, immunity mm -hmm. from the world, right? So I can't remember what the word is right now. Mm -hmm. But you get the immunity of your mother through the breast milk, and you also get super nutrients to grow you quick, right? And if you're drinking or cow's milk or eating the milk from a cow, understand that that was meant for a cow 
and I'm not a cow, mm -hmm. but I'm going to grow. And we see it happening. Like dairy is one of the things that seems to mess with people the most. The reason that I don't think that someone who's had a major medical anything, a major medical anything should be messing with dairy is because it causes things to speed up in growth. That's what it's for, right? It, in, it enhances insulin, resi like insulin's action. Mm -hmm. Like it pushes, like, like that's what it's for. And whatever other growth factors that it's pushing. So probably, um, does it make human growth hormone also? I mean, again, you need to, we need more understanding of what this is, but the ultimate reality is the milk from a mother is to make that kid grow fast because it's dangerous for it to be young, especially a cow. Now we, we carry our humans around, so like they don't grow as fast, but that cow needs to be, right? Hmm. So this yeah. is the other piece of the puzzle that I think people don't think about. <clears throat> I would not, I, I, I would, if it was me, if hmm. I had the heart thing, first of all, red meat would be probably the only thing I was looking at hmm. and eggs, red meat and eggs maybe liver and like but it read from the red like i i probably would be putting all of my attention on the thing that for me signifies the healthiest thing we can yeah. do for our body and according to dr chaffee according to dr baker according to dr barry a total to doctor like they're all saying it's the red meats that are the the, the best and the, the healthiest for our <laughs> yeah. body given so given the way that we feed our animals, if you have access to farm raised things, then Dr. Mm -hmm. Chafee says it doesn't matter. They are all giving you what they're supposed to give you. Farm raised, not being fed the wrong thing. So but, yeah, that's interesting what you say, like uh, what I'm what I'm suggesting. I should see my doctor probably before June. So I'm expecting an appointment in May, but giving the state of our medical, we'll see. Uh, we had like uh, we had my blood tested just before or like uh, we had my blood, blood tested a thousand times over a week at the, <laughs> the Institute and like even you started like you started carnivore more or more strict carnivore about the same time as i was in the hospital so we're both doing it uh, i think i had vegetables once or twice like in the last two months so uh, we will compare we're i'm gonna get back uh with with violet on, on that show and we're gonna compare like like what what three three four months of of mostly red meat but i do eat like pork and chicken when i'm with you because you can have beef but like sometimes i do buy my steak if i feel like having a steak uh, and eggs so we'll we'll check we'll see i think the other thing to keep in mind and this is part of where i i would want us to check in three months and then i would want us to check in like a year or two oh, yeah. when you're when you're at your correct weight mm -hmm. because i feel like this is the other thing that gets missed like when our body is being constantly flooded with toxic incoming food, in, not just toxic incoming food, toxic incoming drinks, toxic <laughs> incoming creams and all, like toxic incoming bunch of stuff. But with, let's look at the food for a second. When it's, when it's in that situation, what it's doing is it's sequestering. So it's, it's you know, compacting this junk and putting it in fat storage. And then as we start to lose weight, it starts letting it out, right? Because hmm. you're, you're breaking down fat and then your kidneys and liver and blah, blah, blah is going to start cleaning that up. So the other thing that I feel like is hard for a lot of people to, to consolidate in their mind and why I think they will go to their doctor, their doctor is going to say, look, I told you. And they're going <laughs> to see all these markers that look bad is because we don't stop to understand that in fact what's happening is that your body's releasing the toxins and then your body is clearing the toxins if, if your if your liver kidneys and pancreas and everything internally is still functioning well it's clearing them and so you're not really gonna know hmm. how you're doing until you're probably a little a few months after yeah. you're at goal weight you need to give your body time to clear all of that junk and by the way i'm going to add another wrinkle here even after you've gotten to your goal weight like myself i know that i'm still clearing other things mm -hmm. my body was built on 50 some odd no 40 some odd years of really bad food 
only in the last six years have I been eating really good food. Only in the last two months have I taken out all the lectins, oxalates, blah, blah, blah. All that stuff is now out of my diet. So even though I'm six years in, I still have all that other stuff that was coming from the healthy vegetables that I thought I was eating <laughs> to clear mm. out of my system. Mm. So yes, it's a long process, mm -hmm. but Wellness Warrior, it is so worth doing. I feel amazing. And I don't think I've ever felt this good. Mm -hmm. Like since I think I'll go back to when maybe when I was under 20, right? Before my knees started hurting me mm -hmm. to go back to when I felt this good and mentally clear. Mm -hmm. And like all the things that you get out of taking good care of mm -hmm. your body. Yeah. I think it's a good thing that I'll, I'll have, I think, uh, multiple follow-ups after the, the first three months. I think it's probably going to be once a year. So, yeah, we'll report back. I'm, I'm curious to, to see, like, and, and I'm curious to see how, how the cardiologists will react <laughs> to this lifestyle change and see that in the end the numbers are, are good. Because, like, when I, did, uh, when I did keto the first time and I did really good. I did have my blood tested for some other reason. I don't know why. I don't remember why. But like everything was like within normal parameters. Like and uh, everything was fine with uh, a good amount of meat and a few vegetables. And, and yeah. So. I feel like we do need to address that too. Because so just for clarity, what Pat just alluded to is the first time because you actually stopped doing yeah. keto. And that's where for the last few years you haven't been doing keto oh, yeah. and that's where the problem showed itself up so to make sure that people watching this are not going to say oh my god keto caused the problem yeah, keto yeah, did true, not true, cause true, the true. problem pat stopped that. doing keto <laughs> yeah. unfortunately mm -hmm. and so fortunately since then though we found carnivore which is mm -hmm. even more strong to yeah. help you to heal yourself. And to be honest, even better than keto. Like that's maybe another, like for another, another video, but like, that's even like better than keto. Like uh, you don't like feel, feel any bloatiness from the vegetables you're eating. And like, uh, so yeah. Well, we're you, gonna like, do, uh, we have to do a insane. keto versus carnivore. Video, yeah. yeah, because I, I feel like it's interesting that you're saying mm -hmm. that. Yeah. As mm -hmm. we go through this process, I feel like we keep learning and we keep like, well, I know for myself, I'm constantly questioning, constantly, every time I get new information, I want to verify it. And we share it with you because ultimately this could have looked very different and it could have been very, very much more sad. And although, trust me, it was sad for me, yeah. it, not, it was sad for you, but it could have been more sad. Mm -hmm. I'm so happy with the outcome, given the outcomes that were possible. Mm -hmm. I'm so happy yeah. with the outcome. Okay. And I think that Wellness Warrior, you can learn from us mm -hmm. because there's there's so much here that's yeah. valuable to take away